I'm Rafa Benitez and you're watching The Road to Istanbul. In the first season of the Rafael Benitez era in Europe, Liverpool FC simply rolled back the years, blazing an unstoppable trail across the continent all the way to the 2005 Champions League final. And if the Reds' presence in the final was unexpected, their triumph in Istanbul over AC Milan was utterly miraculous. So just how did a team that finished 37 points off the pace in the Premier League go all the way in Europe's Premier Club competition. Ten years on, LFC TV travelled to Naples to get the former Reds manager's exclusive match-by-match -match analysis of the players used, tactics employed and opponents overcome in bringing a magical fifth European Cup back to Anfield. Towards the end of the 2003-2004 season, soon after a 3-0 victory away at Birmingham, Gerard Houllier's Liverpool would secure a fourth-place Premier League finish and a berth in the following season's Champions League third qualifying round. However, after six years in the Anfield hot seat, the Frenchman and the club felt it was time for a change. My best wishes, my good luck, go to the club for the coming years in the Premiership and in the Champions League where it belongs. Today is the end of a chapter, a chapter in the uh, illustrious history of the club. Tomorrow will be the start of another one. Three weeks later and a 44-year-old Spaniard, Rafael Benitez, was unveiled as the Reds' new manager. Benitez certainly arrived on Merseyside with impeccable credentials, having recently guided Valencia to two La Liga titles and a UEFA Cup. So Rafa, you became Liverpool manager in the summer of 2004, what did the club expect of you when you turned up? What well, Rick Parry, the chief executive, uh, told me uh, was um, we have to, to win something in three years time. So we have to build something yeah. and in three years time to compete and be capable of uh, winning any trophy. So I thought uh, we did well. but. Uh, I was really pleased with this um, idea because it was totally different to the way that in Spain you used to work. No? In Spain, in Italy, they say you have to win right now. And the idea of you have three years to prepare to build your team was for me was uh, different and was uh, quite positive. So straight into the intensity of Liverpool Football Club and your, your first uh, job was a Champions League qualifier away to Graz. What would it have meant if you'd lost that fixture? I try to be positive always. I remember this game because we have uh, Michael Owen, that um, he was, to be fair, we had the contact with Real Madrid, he, was, he had uh, an agreement, he was nearly going, and he was on the bench. And I remember that everybody was asking, oh, why is Michael Owen on the bench? But I couldn't play him because uh, he was uh, nearly leaving. And welcome to Austria. It's a game I'm really looking forward to, but I wonder what Michael Owen is looking forward to. Is it Owen going gone? But always I was positive because I had a lot of confidence in the team, so I was not thinking about if we can win, what will happen. It will be a fin and free kick here. What a boost it would be if Liverpool could score early here in Austria. Four in yellow shirts. Hoopier, the header home. Oh, the save is an excellent one from Trent. And Sammy Hoopier up there, and this is a cracking effort from the Finn. Kuhl, the touch off is to the German hammer. Ford, it's a lovely ball, big chance here for Barros. Milan Barros, and the save is made by the boot of France. Risa will tuck it back in there, and then a second clearance by Alphans, the best chance of the game so far for Barros. What a glorious pass by Steven Gerrard there. It really is a golden opportunity, he just gets it, he can't get it out of his feet. The, the referee does a lovely step over. Oh, one-on-one -on -one here. It's Coleman. 
And call the left foot. Drives it in. It whistles past the upright. This man's dangerous, no doubt about that. Well, he is. Wants to go onto his left side all the time. And it's Stephen Gerrard who gives the ball away. The general feeling was it was time for a change at Liverpool. Everybody listening to phonings throughout the season would have thought that last year. But Benitez has come with a refreshing approach. And Kuehl here is certainly wanting to be looking to pep up Liverpool this season. The Australian, formerly of Leeds United. Back for Haman, who we know can hit shots. This one will be from Gerrard. It's a thumping goal. Stephen Gerrard, it's right out of the top drawer. He's back. And Liverpool have their first goal under Rafael Benitez. And that is a fantastic strike from Steven Gerrard. Uh, what a super goal, but it just followed some good uh, passing by Liverpool. They kept hold of the ball, they moved it around, eventually got down that left-hand side. And Harry Cool Kuhl just knocks it back there to her man. And Steven Gerrard loves coming on to balls like that. Liverpool have chances here, it's Cissé through the middle, he's got the pace to hold off the man. If he can, it might be a goal. Cissé shot well held by the diving Schrantz. Coleman's making a run into the area here, here he comes, there's the header wide. It's the best chance they've created since the one Coleman fluffed in the first half, but that was uh, good running from the striker. It takes up an intelligent position here behind Hoopier, just can't direct it. Fenner's corner, Hoopier, Barros, Carragher, even up there. That would be a collector's item if Carragher scored, and another brilliant save this time. Barros was up for the header, He's made two or three good saves of Schrantz tonight. Hoopier and Barros were both going in for this one, and Schrantz flinging himself to his left, kept the ball out of the net. Reaches love ball. Cissé nearly to it. It'll come for Gerard. Oh, my word. What a strike from Steven Gerard. But the flag was raised. Uh, we can't get too excited. That's why Steven Gerard's not showing any emotion. Because there was a... Another player offside, but it was a, a Stevie G double, that, almost. Well, you certainly can't take anything away from the strike. It really was an incredible strike. But the service to the front man has been negligible. Sick. Oh. Awfully given away. Chance here for Liverpool to break that back line. Cissé's on his way. He's one-on-one. q has gone through the middle. Cissé, he wants a goal, of course. q and they've got a real chance, Gerard. that's two, that's it for Liverpool. Two goals to nil, both struck by their captain, and it was a lethal strike again. It's no more than Liverpool deserve on the night. I'm sure Cissé would have liked it, but the honour goes to Steven Gerrard. It was, and it was that man, Steven Gerrard, that started the move. It was his ball out to Cissé, which allowed him one-on-one. -on -one. The ball was played to cool. Maybe his first touch wasn't the best, but he recovered and saw that Steven Gerrard had made up the ground. And what a great finish. It's quite right that he should have uh, the two goals because he has been absolutely outstanding. Can you remember off the top of your head how many players started against Graz that started the 11. Champions League final? <laughs> that started the Champions League final? So of the 11 players you had starting against Graz? I don't remember all of them. Nine uh, players. Nine players. That is good. That means that they... Does that say anything to you? Yeah, for me it means that the, um, this group of players, they were working hard, trying to impress, trying to be there. And also, uh, I think this year, uh, we didn't have too much uh, money to spend in transfer, so we have to work uh, with the players that we, we, were, we had there. And I think that the, they show the commitment that they had until the end. The result, of course, was a 2-0 win. Stephen Gerrard impressing, two goals from him. You'd seen Stephen an awful lot when you'd been at Valencia. What were your impressions of him as a player? I met him before, because I have to go to Portugal to talk with uh, Michael Owen, uh, Cara and uh, Stevie, and try to explain my ideas. And then I could see that he, he was um, focused and, and uh, with passion, or real, real passion. And then saw him on the pitch uh, playing for my team. Uh, I could see the quality that he had, the, the ability, uh, technique, everything that uh, after I have seen for years. You'd beaten Graz, but with a group of players that maybe weren't considered your side yet. And of course, you mentioned Michael Owen, Danny Murphy. There was players leaving the club as well. Yeah, it was uh, this time, this period of the season is very difficult with the 
uh, transfer market open is quite difficult, but uh, I could see, I remember the first week when we just arrived, uh, the internationals, they were not there. And we were impressed uh, because the quality was not too much, you know, with a lot of uh, reserve team players training. And we were surprised after coming from Valencia, we saw the levels, oof. but one week after, the internationals, they were coming and then we could see uh, the quality that they had and, and we could see that uh, it was a very strong team. After the break, Rafa reflects on two key arrivals who play huge roles in the Reds' Champions League campaign and we relive a difficult second leg under the floodlights at Anfield against a determined Grazer AK. Having got off to a perfect start in the away leg of their Champions League qualifying tie with Graza AK, Liverpool and their new boss Rafa Benitez refocused on domestic matters. An opening day Premier League draw at Spurs, courtesy of Gibral Cissé's debut goal, was followed by a win at home to Manchester City where they came from behind. But for the first time the Reds were inspired to victory by a rampant Steven Gerrard. <laughs> Days before the return leg of the qualifier, using his knowledge of Spanish football and players, Benitez took a hugely significant plunge into the transfer market. Although they would not figure in the upcoming match at Anfield against the Austrian champions, these two signings would leave a lasting mark on LFC and on this incredible campaign. Xabi Alonso and Luis Garcia had both signed for the club. Big acquisitions for you. Not at this time, because I think that they, they were improving in the meantime when they were there. So Alonso uh, was a player of Real Sociedad and Luis Garcia played for me at Tenerife in second division and after he was in Barcelona waiting. And uh, we signed them when nobody really uh, knew them. And I think that they are good professionals, they have very good mentality and both they impress and then they give some, uh, a lot of things, a very good night to, to Liverpool. Was there something about how they played the game in Spain that you wanted to, to transfer into your Liverpool side? And of course, they didn't play in that Graz game. Yeah, we were trying uh, with both. Uh, we were trying to bring something. We signed Josemi and, and both. Josemi was a defender that I thought that for England could be fine because he was aggressive, but he didn't settle down. And uh, Xavi Alonso was just to dictate the tempo of the game. And I think he was fine, he was good. And Luis Garcia was... Um, a different kind of player. He could do things that in England were not uh, very common, to play between the lines and, and do different movements that the defenders w were not expecting. And I think that both players, they were really good for years, not for Liverpool. There's two Steven Gerrard goals from the first leg, giving Liverpool a good 2-0 lead to come into this second leg here. Great turn by Milan Baros, he's got the better of Tokic. Appeals for a penalty but waved away by the Spanish referee. Well, it was a sweet turn by the Czech striker. A shake of the head by Milan Baros. Look at him here, what a wonderful turn that is. Tokic with the challenge. Well, you've seen them given, there was contact. Oh, a slip, and C saves away with the pace. That's a rash challenge. Opportunity for Liverpool here, Sammy Hoopier forward in that penalty area, taken short, Gerrard! Oh, so close! Wonderfully worked free kick. And the skipper who got those two goals in Austria nearly found the net again. An opportunity here, little shot deflected. Just wide. And will be a corner to Graza AK, a winning start for Rafa Benitez in his first game at Anfield at the weekend against Manchester City. Coleman with the corner, away by Hoopier. Nicely done by Tokic, it's Tokic! Oh! What a strike by the Croatian international. Delight for Walter Schnackner and his team. Look at this by Tokic, got away from Harry Kuehl easily. And a stunning strike that Dudek didn't even see. Well, the Austrians are boosted. 
But here's the inspirational captain, Gerard Barosh. Unlucky. Well, Gerard responding to Rafa Benitez's hopes to lift his side. And Barosh, if he makes contact, he may well score. Gerard again. Barosh. Nicely worked, Cisse! Well, he scored on his Premier League debut at White Hart Lane. Gibril Cisse. Hoopier. Reset. Gerard getting away. Oh, he's been dragged back there. Rene Aufhauser. A blatant yellow card for dragging back Gerard. And Liverpool punish Gratzer from the free kick. Diaw, Gerrard! Straight at Schranz. Rafa Benitez, pensive in his thoughts. Gratzer looking for an equaliser. This is Gerrard. Oh, that's a clumsy challenge by Alphauser, who's already been booked. Gratzer will be reduced to ten men. No. Well, two yellow cards in the space of ten minutes. And Medina Catalejo, the Spanish official, has made a serious error of judgment here. Alfauser, a very, very lucky man. Schrackner trying to keep it quiet. Austrian side have played well here at Anfield. What's oh, a good header and Dudek got a touch to that. Roland Coleman, very unlucky. It's a good ball in this to the back post and Coleman gets away. Dudek beat it out. Nervous times here at Anfield. It's been a nervy display from Liverpool. They know how close they are to the group stages of the Champions League. Flick on by Stephen Warnock. Gerard. And Warnock is through here. What can the youngster do? Lovely play by Warnock. Gerard. Well, oh, that would have been the icing on the cake, wouldn't it? Lovely move by Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool fans hoping for some more glorious European nights to look forward to this season under new boss Rafa Benitez. Nervy moments here. And Potter conceding a free kick. Plenty of players forward in the penalty area here. For Grazere K. Tokic, who scored that great goal, is also in there. Dudek comes and does really well to pull. Well, that is that. Liverpool have done the business. Thanks to two Steven Gerrard goals in Austria. Although Mario Tokic gets the winner here in the second leg, Liverpool under new boss Rafa Benitez reached the group stages of the Champions League. This was to be Liverpool's 15th campaign in Europe's premier competition. When you arrived at Anfield, what did you know about Liverpool's history in Europe and what it meant to the Liverpool fans? I had an advantage because my wife was um, doing the research about the, the city, about the fans, about everything, and we were talking about that for uh, some days. Obviously, when we had the first meeting uh, with uh, Rick Parry and, and his staff, uh, we started learning and we started watching players, watching games and analysing even uh, players. and. I think that we knew a lot about the city. Obviously, when you are inside, when you, you feel the passion at Anfield, uh, even in the city, uh, you are learning more things. But at this time, we were uh, quite good. And thanks to Monse, my wife, that uh, she was giving me all the, the information. But you understood four European Cups were already... Yeah, no, the history, uh, the football history is there. So it's not, uh, it's not difficult not to know that it was one of the biggest clubs in the world. So it's just to to know about the city, the mentality, 
that is one of the good things. You know, my relationship with the fans is because we knew uh, what uh, means Liverpool for them. So uh, talking with people in the streets and uh, the way that they approach you and how they enjoy with the game, with the uh, with uh, every victory, and even the surprise in England is when you lose a game. And if you give 100%, the fans still are behind you. So that, all these things we could feel from the first day. In the Anfield game against Graz, the referee booked a player twice but forgot to send him off. Do, do you remember that incident? Or, no. Nope. Or in fact you don't? Well, that's interesting. Well, what? I, I remember it was a difficult game and we were at the end <laughs> under pressure. But uh, yeah. Yeah, which was an, a nervy end. What, what's the worst refereeing decision you think you've been on the end of? In this game or, or in... No, no across your, your Liverpool career. <sighs> to be fair. Does perhaps <laughs> the beach ball stand out? Yeah, but I have to say that um, it was a massive mistake. But the referee was a new referee and I think that he was a little bit nervous and he made a mistake that in the end cost us the game. But um, more, always when a referee makes a mistake, just one mistake for me is OK, can happen. The problem is when you can see three, four, five in the same game, or we have seen uh, the sending off of Macherano in Old Trafford was strange. So because they, they tried to, to be strong with the new rules or whatever, but uh, I think it was uh, quite strange. And, uh, but um, I prefer to think always about uh, the good things that they, we have uh, enjoyed, you know, and, and the referees, they have a very difficult job. Sometimes uh, you cannot uh, understand, but uh, when you are in charge of a team and you try to do the referee, I think that you, you realise how difficult it is. Next time on the road to Istanbul, Rafa gives his assessment of what was a challenging draw for the Champions League group stages. It was uh, really difficult because Monaco was doing well in the Champions League. Deportivo de La Coruña was a very good team at this time in Spain. And uh, Olympiacos always... We know that it's difficult with uh, Rivaldo players that they have um, experience. And we revisit a convincing Group A opening win over Monaco and a tough night away to Olympiacos in Athens.